We are live. Welcome to Ms. Marvel Episode 2 Thoughts. Now, brief off topic, Julie Noki just did a review of Top Gun, which she definitely watched. But yeah, back to the episode. Kamala is on top of the world, way more confident, and some of the some of the people in the hallway really don't get it, but yeah, absolutely loved it. I'm rooting for you two, my favorite couple. So they are a lesbian couple. I really appreciate that we get confirmation. I've, I wasn't sure if they were more than friends, and Disney has been very, like, yeah. And I, it probably will get cut out of, like, Russian and Chinese versions, but, yeah, still, it's they are. It's not nothing. I like that Kamala says of, you know, and, yeah. She and Ant-Man, we look a lot younger than we are. So that is canon. People in the MCU realize that about Paul Rudd. Or Scott Lang, in this case. And we see Zoe got famous for needing rescuing by a hero. And at first, Kamala does not want to go to the party. And then when Cameron is going to go to the party, she does... Really glad to see more Nakia. And we see Kamala practice with the power, figure out exactly what she can do with them. Now, you know, in, in episode one, she was basically using them by instinct. If she wants to do it on purpose, she needs practice. And, you know, they reenact the fall from end game but we see wasn't a far drop at all at this point it's just a thing they do making light of the most tragic and intense moments in other mcu stuff i'm not really a fan but i'm i'm getting used to it i'm not gonna get really upset every time it happens and we find out the powers are from inside her so you know they might do some of the inhuman stuff and by the end of the montage, she's good at using the powers. Very cool. I really like seeing Kamala and Nakia at the mosque. And it's just like they're two normal teenagers. It's just they're going to a mosque instead of a church or nothing. And just, yeah, you know, the they don't act like it's a big deal. The, you know, for example, the them washing their faces and their feet and this stuff, you know, because that's just... That's what you do there. And, like, some Hollywood stuff acts like, you know, what what are these Martians doing? You know, this is so weird. When it's just, you know, that's that's their tradition. You know, the, every religion has traditions that if you come in from the outside and you're not trying to understand it, it might seem, you know, maybe not, you know, just, it, it's... It's different from what you're used to. And different from what you're used to, as long as it's not harmful, is just something we need to get accustomed to, you know. And, and Nakia and Kamala talk about how bad things are in the women's section of the mosque. Nakia is going to run for the board. I really, you know, I love how supportive, you know, not all of the time, but when they are supportive, they are ridiculous really really supportive like when they're outside the mosque Nakia's like I'm never gonna get on the board you know everybody likes that that other guy who's gonna you know and you know Kamala's like no you know what you can do it change is here change is her and just yeah you know they're they're always they're always getting each other you know they're they're paying compliments and they're getting the you know, they're, they're always convincing each other to do what they really want to do and they feel they should do, even if they're a little insecure about it. Just, yeah, absolutely love it. And we see Kamala apologize to her mother, and she does get to go to the party. I, I really appreciate that they, this is a show that, like, ultimately it is from the perspective of teenagers and often on their side but it doesn't make adults and especially parents out to just be monsters who just want to take things away from children 
especially their own children. And Kamala accidentally drinks alcohol, just like in the comic, but it doesn't lead to the powers, since that already happened, so it's just a reference. And Cameron walks right up to Kamala, but it's just because she's on his shirt. I must have hurt. Belly flop? No, it's a, I'm okay. I'm a golden god. And Kamala and Cameron, you know, they're, they, they, oh, they know all the same stuff. There's a, they're not, they don't agree on absolutely everything, but, you know, yeah. And it's stuff that the white people in school don't know, so, you know, she's not used to being able to talk to a boy about these things. Maybe Nakia, but that's not the same thing. And Bruno doesn't like the Cameron and Kamala getting along so much, so he keeps trying to interject. And he calls Bruno Brian. He he nails everybody else's name, but Bruno Brian. I agree with him. That's probably on purpose. And I really, you know, Nakia loves it. Like she eats that up. It's like Brian. Brian's mad. Why is Brian mad? Kamala dancing and lip syncing when she gets home is adorkable. Just like she's in the comic, they really got it exactly right. And she takes a brief break from the musical to open the fridge, reply to her mom. And you can see both parents really confused as she walks away again in such a good mood. And, you know, like, I figure they're probably, they, you know, after that, they turn to each other and, like, she's not on drugs, she's not drunk, she's not doing anything that harms her or anyone else. We'll just let it slide, you know, just... Because, she, you know, she's not moving and talking like she's drunk or on drugs. Actually, yeah, that, that briefly reminds me, I don't think I mentioned in, in last week's, but I did really love, you know, she's trying to talk them into it, and into going to the AvengerCon, and she's like... You know, she's trying to, she, she's like, this, how is this a big deal? And she says something like, it's not like I'm going to do cocaine. And it's like, oh, that is, that is not the right approach. Because now they've got that image in their head. And yeah, Kamala just barely got home. And Cameron already texted her. So sweet. Sure, all he texted was, First rhyming lesson Monday, but it can develop from there. And Nakia points out, you know, they didn't spend the, you know, she points out the, the inordinate amount of time that they spend on, you know, yeah, I'm just going to quote, history is written by the oppressors. That's all I'm going to say. Too true. And Nakia thinks, you know, Kamala, like, it's, I guess the, yeah, the bangle, like, accidentally starts some, some magic, and it, like, it's the, uh, it's the superpowered version, I equivalent of a zit, you know, so she runs into the bathroom, you know, I think it might also be, like, in, in one of the issues of the comic, she's running through the hallway, and, like, her hand, Let's see, I think it starts out being too big, so she's like, shrink, and then shrinks down to, like, this little, like, doll hand size. It's like, and big and big and, you know, and just, yeah, I, th I think that's what they're they're doing here. And, you know, Nakia thinks that she's on her period, and we get the detail that Kamala's mom gets weird about tampons, which I can imagine. Yeah, just, it's really, really... Yeah, and Bruno got into Caltech, but he's reluctant. He's going to miss Kamala. And, you know, Mr. Wilson's references are Star Wars and The Devil Wears Prada, I want to say. It's, you know, the, it's a, yeah, Meryl Streep and Hathaway movie. I'm not particular. I like Meryl Streep. I, I think Anne Hathaway's talented. I don't watch very many Anne Hathaway movies. But yeah, the the not really my. They're, they're not made for me, and that's great. And yeah, Kamala chooses the driving lesson over training with Bruno, but she does invite him to Eid, the lesser one. I really appreciate this thing. Like he's getting included because it is the like we don't really we haven't gotten information so far, but like 
he doesn't seem to have any siblings, not very much family that like takes care of him and such. Like we've, it's been mentioned that her his, his grandmother is like you know like um I I'm terrible with names. Uh, Kamala's mother made some food specifically for Bruno's grandmother, and that's I think that's the only family member that's been mentioned of his so far. So. Yeah, I guess there's some chance that he, like, lives in the same house as his grandmother and makes sure she has, you know, makes sure she gets food. You know, maybe, I mean, I don't know if it's possible that she's so old that she can't go out and go shopping herself, you know. Something. But yeah, so so he doesn't have much of a social life, so Kamala invites him along to these, you know, is, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Islam, Islamic celebrations, you know, and yeah, like I, I mean, it depends. But some of these places, if you're there with a Muslim, they're fine with you as long as they're like respectful and such. And Cameron and Kamala are really getting along, but Amir catches them, so they have to pretend Cameron is a cousin rather than a potential boyfriend. You know, if if like if she's alone with a boy that's now either a fiance or a husband, he better be part of the family or there's gonna be trouble, you know. But he can pull off a perfect Pakistani accent, so they appear to buy it, although I think Amir's wife knows, and they do the very MCU joke that Amir apparently thinks that he remembers him, even though he's never met him before. And it's, yeah. And if you go back and watch the bit where she's like got the menu card up, and you could just see Amir's face off in the background, there actually is a brief part where it looks like maybe Amir recognized her. And like turns to his wife and say, Kamala's right in there. Let's go say hi. And we're told that Amir had a goth phase. I would pay money to see that. And we get some backstory on Nani. She followed a trail of stars back to her father. So yeah, that sounds distinctly like that might have been the, the powers of the band. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. And her powers manifest at the dinner table, and you know the they they wake her up, and her mother is like, "Did you not eat? Did you not eat enough? Or did you eat too much?" Sorry about the accent. Yeah, just and yeah, and Kamala calls Nani, but doesn't get the information about the Bengals other than that they belong to Nani's mother. Just get some information out of her mother, but she doesn't want to talk about it. I quite like, you know, Kamala steps in. I guess, I didn't really think about it at the time. I guess he's offering her some of what's on the plate. He's like, yeah, he he's probably like, we're, we're about to put this away, so I wanted to offer you one more piece if you wanted one, you know, something like that. So, you know, he tries to open the door, and she, like, shoves it shut with with the powers, and he's like, what was that? So, you know, he, he, and he manages to open it, but by the time he's opened it, she's got, she's under the covers and she's like, uh, pretending like she just woke up and he's like, uh, it's, it's okay, just go back to sleep. You know, he's, it's probably a school night. He's, he's relieved that she's getting a good night's sleep, you know, and then after he leaves, you know, we see that. I mean, I'm guessing she probably, like, muted the phone just in case Nani decided to say something while, you know, that's, yeah, you can do that super quick. And, yeah, so finishes the conversation like that. I might be wrong, but I think there's some chance that those little square things on his plate, uh, yeah, when he checks on her, might be lokum, also referred to as Turkish Delight. By the way, if you haven't had any, they are absolutely delicious. Although I realize not everybody will like them. They are very different from Western candy in flavor and consistency. And I think that's also what was being served at the dinner table, passed around when talking about the Great Partition. But yeah, they are absolutely delicious. Let's see. 
I like Nakia noting that politics is dirty. I love Nakia, Bruno, and Kamala getting into the political campaigning, all the subgroups at the aid. I, I'm not sure I've ever gone to church as a, like, I wasn't raised Christian. So church for me is like weddings and funerals. That's, there's not really any, like, yeah. But I want to say Real James said that he, you know, he recognizes that that's like at his church. There are all these different groups. And Kamala wants information from the Illumin aunties. I really love Nakia's little monologue to... Uh, see, I feel like some of them call him Abu, but I don't know if that's just the a word that means father. So I'm just going to go with Kamala's dad. But, you know, she does. she goes through this whole thing of, like, you know, the... the uh, you know, women's rights, and you want to give your children a good future, and, you know, and she, you know, it culminates in her saying, you wouldn't want to kill our dreams, would you? And she puts a pin on his plate. She is a born politician. That is remarkable. She's great. And that male damage control agent, still great at manipulating, plays Zoe like a fiddle. That is really, like... <laughs> That probably would work, you know, she just, she, she's proud of her YouTube channel, and this, yeah, she, you know, I, I think he says something like, wait, are you the Zoe, you know, the only one I know, you know, she completely, because, because she's used to when, when someone that she doesn't already know, knows her name, that must be because of YouTube, you know, so, yeah. And she does try to hide Kamala's identity, but her little reaction when, you know, they're going through these different, you know, like ethnic groups, and they say South Asian, gives it away. And, it's, you know, do the tri-state sweep, so we're dealing with ro racial profiling, and they actually point out, you know, the FBI surveilling mosques, which is a really ugly policy born out of 9-11 anxieties. And I think it was New Rockstars that pointed out, you know, before that, you know, the FBI was focusing more on, you know, uh, dom domestic terrorists. And they're still around. There's a lot more of them now than, yeah. So, really messed up. But, yeah. So, I really appreciate that the, the show is getting into and And the Great Partition is also, like, if you're white and you don't know anybody that was affected by it, it's probably not something you think about. You might have heard about it. You might know what it is. But, yeah, for them, that it, it is something they think about, you know. And, and we see, and, and again, it's this, like, it's not just, well, they're, they're Muslim, so have them talking about a Muslim thing. No, no, no. It's when Amir introduces, I think, did they say wife or did they say fiancé? There's a lot of details. They can't keep up. But, yeah, she's being introduced to the family. And so it is only natural that they talk about the Great Partition because every family has a story from the Great Partition. And, you know, they're telling her their story. Did she get into her? I'm, I'm not sure we heard her getting into to her story. But, yeah, you know, that is, yeah. Now, if they were going to have a character being in danger of falling because they're taking a selfie at the wrong place, of course it was going to be either a child or a teenager, so I really appreciate that they make it a boy, not a girl. We, I feel like we have enough media that says that, ah, oh, teen girls, they're so, you know, they're, they're obsessed about all the wrong things. Teen boys are not better. And... And and we do have a good bit of media that points out that sometimes adults can be as oblivious as teenagers and children. And the crowd have now accepted that the hero's name is Nightlight. And, yeah, you know, as others have pointed out, that's probably a reference to Night Monkey. And Kamala calms down the boy, even though she doesn't like his favorite food. And 
you know, ultimately she managed to save the boy, even though it doesn't exactly go perfectly. And we see the social media response. I love that it's not just positive stuff praising the hero. There's also memes about ice cream pizza. Why do you feel like that's AV testing? Like, if enough people think that sounds good, I'm guessing you can buy it at Disneyland soon. And, yeah, I, that seems to be her great-grandmother reaching out for her right before the boy falls towards the car. And a drone recognizes Kamala as having superpowers. And, you know, we were told they're going to look at mosques. And this is, you know, a, a right, right next to the mosque, I want to say. And Cameron shows up to save Kamala. And there's a woman back of the car, Cameron's mother. But it also, I mean, I don't, I, I'm not 100% sure. But is that maybe the grandmother? It's... I, f I feel like it might be. And yeah, I love this episode. Like the first, I cannot wait for more. This is really looking like it might be one of the best. It's going to be difficult to knock WandaVision off the, the number one spot. But yeah, I would I would say it's smoother than even early episodes of Moon Knight. There was a little bit of stuff in there that just didn't completely work and I don't think there's anything so far that I didn't think worked in in these two episodes I really appreciate that these are teenagers that act speak like teenagers and Right, one of the one of the damage control agents to say we're supposed to say Latinx now, right? I guess Disney is saying that's that is the respectful way to go. And you know, like the damage control aren't quite they're they're having trouble keeping up because they're racially profiling kind of thing. Yeah. I mean that is the gender neutral term, so yeah. And, yeah, so the, the brace could be Kree tying Kamala to Carol Danvers, and that's something they're investigating in the Marvel's movie. I look forward to that. I think we'll have some fun scenes of... I, I don't think Carol is going to be super comfortable that there's this teenage girl who's, like, obsessing over her and, like, named... You know, yeah. I guess we don't know yet if she, I'm thinking it's going to be that she names herself Ms. Marvel as a tribute to Captain Marvel. Now, let's see. right, it's not only teenagers who make mistakes. It's not only teenagers who have a difficult time owning up and apologizing, but it is difficult for teenagers. I really appreciate this is a show that shows you should own up and apologize. Like, uh, uh, it's not that Kamala never does anything wrong, and it's not that she never does something that her parents don't want her to do, but when she actually does say something or do something that upsets them, she apologizes and she admits that she was wrong. And it's also not painted as them being completely unreasonable. They really are worried about her. You know, the the father says, We don't you know, we trust you, but we don't trust it's, it's everybody else we don't trust, you know, and that is the thing, because they, at the end of the day, that, you know, maybe, yeah, it's just, it's difficult, you know, to, to trust, yeah. I really appreciate that, uh, the, you know, th these are parents that aren't, like, helpless without the protagonist, it's, it's kind of an annoying trope in some of these superhero things. I guess that might be everything I have to say. I like the, I, I think the, the, you know, both of these endings, both these episodes have great endings. You know, the first one ends with her saying she wants to be cosmic. You know, she doesn't just want to be what her parents raised her to be. And then this one has this really great cliffhanger because like, I'm sure Kamala is freaked out by this woman sitting there that, like, you know, yeah. If she really, I, I figure that she's been waiting a long time to meet someone in Kamala's family that put on the, the 
I'm uh, band brace. They put on the brace and started using the powers. And if she is like this, you know, she's been around for a really long time, either doesn't age or ages very, very slowly. You know, yeah, she's been watching her line from afar and just waiting for this thing. And then when she saw that, you know, on social media that there was someone using these hard light powers, yeah. And she sent Cameron in because if Kamala is in love with Cameron, that means that it's, you know, yeah, she's going to get in Cameron's car. Like, imagine if it was just the, the woman driving up and saying, Kamala, get in my car. She's like, I don't, I don't know you, you know, but she's going to get in Cameron's car. And yeah, I, I'm guessing Cameron and the, you know, like, they were basically waiting for a time when they had a captive audience because what's Kamala going to do? No matter how freaked out she is by this woman, she's not going to open the car door and go back to the drones that can disable her powers, you know, and, and fly faster than she can. She can move, you know. So, yeah, captive audience, and I'm guessing we're going to get a an info dump early in the next episode, maybe at the very start. And maybe that'll clear up, you know, some, some people are saying maybe it's like she's she's a Cree, like we saw with Annette Bening and Captain Marvel, uh, you know, either either regular Cree or Cree defector like Annette Bening. And the, yeah, the powers are Cree, the, the braces are Cree. And yeah, there, there are various options, but yeah, I... I'm really, really psyched to see where it goes from here. And yeah. So that is it for this one. Catch you next week.